you know, come to the front. You, you don't want to miss this out or you know, move to the side so that more people can come in and, and have a seat. No one's moving. All right, no one moved. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, I know you are, are in for a treat today, and I'm very excited to introduce our speaker for this workshop. Jackie Fabulous is a Jamaican-American with a law degree and a love for making people laugh. Relatable is a stand-up comedy show that influences people around the world, showing them how to find the funny in their flaws. Jackie feels no shame in sharing her now hilarious experience of growing up, knowing when everyone else's mommy used a large knife in the kitchen, hers used the machete. <laughs> Jackie Fabulous is Relatable is a gut-busting look into how we can all relate to a woman who would prefer cupcakes to kale and how we should laugh at the things that embarrass us the most. I love the cupcakes, yes. I'm so excited. So without further ado, everybody, welcome Jackie Fabulous. Joel Osteen 
type of mega church <laughs> to be allowed to inspire anyone because I don't have my stuff together, not even slightly, like not even remotely. <laughs> and I feel we don't have enough speakers that are like that, where they're like their life is jacked up too, and they want to tell you how to figure it out. <laughs> I, stopped, I used to be a self-help like addict. I'd watch everything and read everything and go to conferences and YouTube to death and and be like these people. You know, did you see their house? And a woman, you see her, her fine husband, and I, I ain't got no husband. I don't, have, I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't even have an interest. You know, I don't have a and they have kids, and I don't have kids, you know, and I don't know if I'm going to have any because, oh, also my birthday is August 12th, and I'm in my 40s. So, yeah, Leo, clearly up here. I'm in my 40s, and I don't have kids, and, you know, I doubt I'm going to have. Kid now, um, I might. I'm not sure. Who wants to help? Anybody? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm transitioning, and I realize I'm in my 40s. I love being a stand-up comic, but I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of empty for me. It's just a lot of traveling, and you know, I do inappropriate, fun jokes, and then I send you ladies home. But I kind of want to have a kind of career where, as a woman, I can do this while I'm trying to figure out how to get my stuff together. So. I appreciate you guys inviting me to come speak, knowing that, you know, Toyota is probably calling me right now asking for your money. <laughs> uh, don't judge, you all. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out my life while I do all this. Because last year, last year this time, um, I, I had a partner when I did this last year. I had a, a girl, Kelsey Humphrey, look her up. She's a very fantastic, funny, inspiring, motivational speaker, a funny girl, but I also, I was with her last year, we had a wonderful time, but I, it was my idea for her and I to collaborate, and I felt like I had to have a partner to do this, take me center stage, but I couldn't, I was like, what, by myself? No, you gotta have a, a buffer with you. And I thought I needed her because she's Caucasian. She's Caucasian, she's in her 30s, in her 40s, she's married, she has a child, and I go, oh, appeal to everyone because she has all that, I have none of that. <laughs> two different races, two different generations. But then I realized that if I really want to do this, I should be able to perform or do this alone, so I perform on stage alone every night. Like I was, I was in Vegas, I just got off of doing 14 shows at the Comedy Cellar at the Rio, and I just got back, I just got here yesterday, just finished performing. Wow. So I, I'm, I'm solo all the time, because I can do solo jokes, I can do solo motivation, I can do solo <laughs> inspiration. So trust me, this is all me learning who I really am through being funny and getting paid more than chicken fingers. <laughs> French fry is new, uh, although no, chicken fingers are fantastic. No, <laughs> uh, last year this time, I, I had a disrespectful roommate. I, I've always never, I've never been able to live alone because of, you know, fan of comic money was always kind of funny. And this time last year, I, I had my apartment in Los Angeles. I'm from New York, the Bronx. I also live in LA, I bounce back and forth, and I had a roommate in LA and uh, a girlfriend, my best friend in high school, his daughter lived with me. Very nice girl, millennial, so you know, I always have out the challenge. And um, I love millennial, I love when you're young, you're fun, you're fun to be around. But she had a lot of visitors, I'd, you know, I'd be on the couch, half naked, watching the TV, and there'd be some random dude come out the back room. I'm like, okay, I gotta, that's Jesus, tell me I need to. <laughs> that's Lord, you need to make some more money, girl. Stop with these, these priceless roommates, you know, it's not a good idea. And. Um, Last year, this time, I couldn't help my mother with her bills, and this year I can. Last year I was, you know, still kind of my mother, I'll get into that later, but she's, they're all in New York, and you know, financially, I'm, I, my goal is to take the financial burden off my mother, because she's retired, and a widow, a widower, who is it, who's, who's the widow when you're, is it a guy or a girl? Girl. Girl, the widower, right? Yeah, she's a widower, so I, this, this, this year, I can help her with her bills, I couldn't do that last year. Um, Last year, I couldn't offer my family a trip to Atlantic City because I was performing there. You know, this year I, I performed there and I offered my family to come stay in the hotel for free and watch me perform, and nobody came. But the point is, I Sometimes you just want the option, you don't really have to have it happen. Um, uh, last year, ooh, this is you know, personal, okay. Last year, I had a friend's with benefits relationship, we all know what that is. And uh, that didn't go anywhere because he didn't want any more than that. So man why last year I was not motivating anybody. Um, <laughs> 
class heroes. I was chin deep dating guys, and I use the term dating loosely. Um, <laughs> men who didn't want to be with me, and the one guy that caused me kind of the most emotional turmoil, he spent a lot of time telling me that I already act like I'm a star. I, I, I want a lot of attention, I drain the energy from a room, and by that, he means shine. I walk into the room. <laughs> and he didn't like that, and he told me every chance he got, you know, you already act like you're a star, and you already act like you already have all the accolades of the entertainment business. And I don't know what he meant by that, but I still kept seeing him. Um, <laughs> because I didn't think I deserved anything better. And that's where I was last year. And this year, I don't know whether this is a positive or a negative, but there, there are no men at all in any way, shape, or form. Did <laughs> <laughs> you ever go see someone to get rid of like everybody? Like all the strays, like everybody continues. <laughs> in 2000, and I moved from New York and lived in some lady's condo in Orange County, California, and never lived alone since then, and it's 2020 pretty much now. And I could finally afford to live by myself, so much so that I could actually even think about buying property. I could, you know, I want to buy a condo or a house, I'm not sure what, what state, but last year this time, I was, my rent was late. Like, it was all, it's, it's, it's been late for 10 years. I've been in the same apartment <laughs> for 10 years, and my rent has been late every month that I live in this apartment. And my, you know it's funny when your landlord is calling you and they're concerned like, we got your rent early. You, <laughs> you okay? Like, <laughs> so, you know, you like the shame when your creditors are like, we got your bill paid early. We want to make sure you are right. You're being held out this. <laughs> so, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> Last year, I was still opening for other comics. I was not a headliner. I was not marketed as a headliner. And now, I will not open for anyone. I, I'm a headliner. You come, you come to see me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm the marquee. You know, I'm the draw. The big, the, big, uh, the big want for most entertainers, comedians, or singers is that you want to be the, the star of the show. And it takes a lot of years to get there. And I teach it for everyone, everyone that's famous or not famous, and now I can finally say that, you know, your people are coming to see me, and that took, just I've been a comic for 13 years. That's taken about 13 years to get here, and now finally, you know, it's only my name on the marquee. Um, I, uh, my first time speaking, I, uh, my first time doing this was for free at a college in Orange County um, in 2000, 2013? Wow. 2010, 11, 12, 13. And I was just figuring out if I could and, um, motivate a room full of graduating students. And that was for free a long time ago. And after that, I took a, a workshop on how to be a speaker. Because I'm, I'm the queen of going to all the classes and not doing anything I learned there. <laughs> <laughs> you ever like watch every how-to video and you're like, if you just do it, for God's sake, and just <laughs> you learn, you got every instruction on how to do it, now just do it. So I, I've read books and I've uh, spoke for free and now I'm actually doing it where I can you know, pay a bill or two with this. I um next year, two years, oh, at a comedy club, I did that too, but like in LA, I can get any comedy club in LA to let me have a room to do this, and I did this for two years ago with the same woman I mentioned before, Kelsey Humphrey, so she, she and I kind of did this together for a while before I realized that I actually want to take center stage, so I have to do this on my own. Um, oh boy, oh, the take the center stage thing, <laughs> I'm sorry, I skip around. <laughs> okay, well, let's, where did the, uh, the problems I had with my self-esteem start before I realized that I could actually take center stage? It goes as far back as my, my teeth, my, my two front teeth. I have a gap that you can pretty much drive through. Uh, right there. <laughs> and um, I, I got braces, I had braces twice in high school. And when I got the braces off, I had the retainer. You know, back in the old school days, the retainer was, you know, your nemesis, because if you didn't wear it, Overnight, and he would be like, we're back! <laughs> <laughs> so I tried it with the braces and the retainer twice. And then I got braces the third time. 
time when I was in my 30s and I worked for a law firm that I had really great benefits. And I got, you know, I was a grown person with, you know, the big metal and I had them removed and the gap came back. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's God saying, look, that's, that's your brand. You have a, you know, that's your flaw. My, I, my, one of my things is your flaws are fabulous. And one of the things I, all of my headshots now, a lot of pictures. I can't stop smiling. Like, I, I, like my girlfriend here who's helping me, Sarah. Say hi to Sarah. Hi, hi, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she's always kind of asking, like, can you just close your mouth a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> you smile on every picture, every video, like somebody jammed a hanger in your mouth. And I, and I realize now that that's part of what I'm known for. I like the gap in my teeth that makes me feel good about myself. Because I live in Hollywood, and Hollywood is a land of, you know, fix it. Like, if you can just get the visible line. Because if you've ever seen people's celebrities cheat in Hollywood, on TV, imagine close, I mean, in person, they're very white, the teeth, they're large. <laughs> they, I think there are too many in their mouth. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing in Hollywood is to replace whatever God gave you, what you grew up with, and put in a nice set of, you know, big, bright, white horse teeth. And that's <laughs> And I don't want to do that. I want to be the teeth that I am right now, and I want to live that way all the time. Um, I, uh, I've been, uh, I've been trying, with uh, America's Got Talent has kind of taught me something that I guess is part of the message tonight, is that I have been trying to get to the next level to take center stage for a really long time. Like I've been gripping really hard and trying, and I just got <laughs> two emails yesterday that helped kind of reiterate what I'm trying to teach myself and teach you ladies that um, when you let go of trying to be something and if you feel like you really, 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 really want something, you're probably not gonna get it. Does that make sense? If you feel like, I've got to get this job, if I don't get it, I'm gonna die. If this guy doesn't call me, I don't know how I'm gonna be in love again ever. Those shoes, I know they're $300, but I have to have them. If you just kind of let go of the need to have things, the shoes go on sale, the job comes to you, you know, the guy or girl you're interested in, they, they holler at you first. like. And I, uh, I've been trying to be on TV in the America's Got Talent capacity for years. Like, I've been submitting my sets to all the late night shows, the Tonight Show with Conan, the Late Show with James Corden, Seth, all of them. And they've all sent, and I've sent each show, each show at least five or six different sets, meaning a uh, five minute video <laughs> of me doing jokes. And they've all come back with a very detailed, broken down, elaborate, explanation of why I'm not right for the show or this show doesn't hit the way it's supposed to hit. And last night, I, for some ridiculous reason, I asked my agent, please send me one of these emails. Because sometimes you don't always see them, they kind of go through your people and you're like, that's God's way of saying, you don't need to see <laughs> why they don't want you. But last night I'm like, I'm doing this speech, I want to have all the hard, tough love I can possibly get. So he sent it to me and one of them I'll just read, it's not that bad, but it's also not good. Um, <laughs> The booker said, thanks for sharing. I was actually hoping to see something new from her. I watched you set a couple of times, and unfortunately, this set isn't something I see working for our audience. Uh, I feel the bits could be developed more or taken further than they are. Now, this was a year ago. That's why this is relevant. This was a year ago to this month, August 2018. And in August 2019, America's Got Talent, I have a, a friend who's a, produ a producer for the show, and she's like, give me your video, let me send it to the producers of AGT. And I'm like, ah, I, I'm not doing well with these exact jokes, nobody else wants them. <laughs> Why in the road AGT want them? She's like, just send me the video. I gave her the video, and next thing you know, they're like, we want you, just come down. I'm like, well, you sure? This joke is about NBC. They're like, no, 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 we don't care. <laughs> that I thought for sure they'd be like, no, 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 how dare you? And they were like, no, whatever it is you do, don't change a word, we, we want Jackie Fabulous. And I tried to get on these, all these shows for years, and what is, a, I think I heard is the biggest talent show on television, it has between nine and 11 million viewers a week. They called me, and they were like, hey, we, we heard you're good, you're cute, you're funny, come on down. And when, see, when I stop trying, and when I stop digging and praying and sending off all these submissions, like, why doesn't anybody want me? When I stop worrying about that and relying on someone else's validation of what I do for a living and pay my bills with, they came to me. And that's something I felt was poignant. And, uh, and then what's funny is that I also, last night, because you know, late at night is the worst time to be on social media. Um, <laughs> after I got that email from one no, I, uh, I posted on, on Facebook, 
you know, if you can't handle a no, you're probably not meant to be in the business, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, put, I, I, I requested to see an email of a, a long, elaborate no that I know I got. And I got it, and I've been mad ever since like, I read the email. <laughs> and I said, I know that sometimes God is like, you don't need to see why we said no. Don't worry about it. But I'm like, I want to the email, and then I pulled off the post, but I'm still angry, by the way. <laughs> so I got a text from, of course, another lesson. Everybody follows you that you don't think might follow you <laughs> on social media. So one of the, the gentleman executives who runs one of these shows texts me, and he's like, uh, was that post about me? <laughs> and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning. I told you, I don't have it together. I told you, I do not have it together. <laughs> I texted him back, no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I know you follow me. I would never talk bad about you on your show. And it wasn't about him, but it was about him. <laughs>
because I was brought in contingent upon me passing this, this certain class because my LSAT scores were so bad. I, I took the class, took the test, and failed it. That's why I left Whittier Law School and went to Trinity Law School, which is a school no one's heard of. It's a Christian <laughs> school, fantastic, I love God. But they're not, they're not ABA, they're CBA, which means they're only accredited in the state of California. So I kind of had to figure out how am I going to be a world famous lawyer if I'm only accredited in California. <laughs> so I finished law school at Trinity Law School, got my law degree, and I just realized I just got to stay in California and figure it out. So, but when I moved to California, I moved out here to go to law school, and then by accident, I eloped and got married. Um, <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend in New York for a day. all of my 20s. All of my 20s, it was one man the whole time. Quite boring. But it was one guy <laughs> for 10 years. And we broke up in New York in dramatic style fashion. He followed me to LA, eloped up, and proposed, I guess. And more like, you wanted to start him do this? And so that's how we did it. <laughs> and, uh, we went to Vegas, eloped, but then I divorced him eight months later because honestly, during the ceremony, I, I complete fear, like took over my whole body. I'm like, well, I'm marrying him. I broke up with him before I moved to California. Why am I marrying him now? It's like I got lonely. I got lonely. He used to tell me, don't you want somebody to love you? That was his his turn, his uh, his pitch. Don't you want somebody to love you? And I'm like, not really hot at all. <laughs> It was just, he was, I didn't bother, I wasn't part of the dating game, wasn't getting rejected. He knew me, my parents knew him, I knew his mother, so I was just comfort, comfortable with him and with him for 10 years. And then I divorced him because I realized I outgrew him. And that took 10 years of me realizing that, you know, I'm in California now, I, I can figure out my love life some other way. So that was, uh, that was my thing coming into California. I, um, when I was going to law school, when I finished law school, I did, have a relationship with a guy in the, the military, a military dude, and I thought that was perfect, but he was a, a liar. I didn't, you know, he was a liar. He forgot that he was a liar. <laughs> <laughs> he was the kind of liar where he'd be like, Jackie, he would never sleep over after, you know, fun times. And, and I would ask him, why won't you sleep over? And he was like, Jackie, you know that I was, I was at war in Kuwait. I need to have my dream catcher on the wall. I'm afraid I might have PTSD and push you in the headlock and try to kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, did you forget when you told me you were at war in Kuwait? You worked in the kitchen. <laughs> jump ahead to get my own apartment. I had my 
my last roommate before the girlfriend, before the girl of my friend in high school, he committed suicide. <coughs> uh, I was traveling, I came home from traveling, and I was in my apartment on my couch eating Chinese food, and I, I heard a phone ring in the back room, his room. Didn't, I ignored it because roommates, given their privacy, you don't care. So then my, I got a knock on the door and I opened it and it was a police officer and the apartment manager. So of course I'm like, this is a lot of enforcement for a late rank, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it was. Um, they were like, your roommate didn't report to work today. We want to do a welfare check and check to see if he's in the house. So I'm like, sure, come on in. So I'm like, I went out to the apartment. I'm like, I don't want to be here, whatever you find. So they went to the back room and they, they, they checked, took a few minutes, then came out and told me, your roommate shot himself in the head. Oh my God. And I'm like, uh, how long has he been back there? And they said, if you had waited one more night, you would have smelled it. Oh. Oh. So I, uh, I, didn't, I never saw his body. They, they didn't wheel him out in a body bag. But I never saw what happened. And I don't know how to, to explain. When, when the cop came out to tell me that my roommate did this to himself, the cop asked for my ID, because clearly, now I've become law and order, right? Because they're like, we need to know where you are. <laughs> and that's natural, it's part of the you know, law enforcement. And I gave him my ID, and he, he checked it, whatever, he, whatever they do, it's a cloud of smoke, and they run your name. And, <laughs> and he was like, okay, we see you were on an airplane when this happened. Now, my thing about this, and this is not to make light of this, it's not a joke, but the, my roommate killed himself on July 26th. And he's always paid the rent early in cash. And I'm like, why would, and then the, the police officer was questioning me kind of in a way like, where were you? He got really serious before I got life. And I'm like, first of all, it's July 26. Why would I kill my roommate before the rent was paid? <laughs> that's too much, that's too much. <laughs> in the last 